It is a slowly progressive disorder that occurs when the pituitary gland produces too much growth hormone. If diagnosed and managed early, the long-term comorbidities and possible increased risk for premature death can be reduced. However, for patients, it can sometimes take up to 10 years to receive a diagnosis. Wow. Well, today, understanding the signs and the symptoms for early intervention. So let's go behind the mystery of acromegaly. So I was always very active um, in my early 20s, was physically fit. My husband and I got married in my mid-20s, and we were blessed with our daughter um, shortly after. You know, there really wasn't a lot that held me back in life. You know, the first thing that I noticed was the weight gain, but I also noticed loss of menses. I noticed that my hands were, were increasing in size. I had to have my wedding ring resized. I also noticed that my feet were increasing. My, my feet actually went up three additional sizes. The soft tissue swelling um, also happened in my face. Quite honestly, I didn't want to look in the mirror. Uh, because I didn't recognize the person that was looking back at me. The Balancing Act met with University of California, San Francisco neuroendocrinologist Dr. Lewis Blevins, who specializes in acromegaly. The pituitary gland is a small uh, gland that's located at the base of the brain. It's somewhere between the size of a pea and a lima bean. The pituitary gland has growth hormone producing cells located within it, and they regulate metabolic processes and growth and development and tissue regeneration over time as we age. In a patient with acromegaly, they have formed a tumor from one of those growth hormone producing cells, and that produces too much growth hormone and drives the liver to produce IGF-1, and together, growth hormone and IGF-1 cause metabolic changes in the human being that's affected with the disease process, and also enlargement of the hands, the feet, the skeletal system, cartilage, and all of the body organs. And patients who have acromegaly often will present with an increased shoe size over time or an increased ring size. But it's more than just that. Uh, other parts of the body also enlarge, including the nose, uh, the ears, uh, the mandible usually grows, the teeth separate. It's difficult to say how long a patient's actually had the disease process by the time they present, and that's because of the fact that many of these symptoms and signs of acromegaly develop slowly over a period of time. The severity of symptoms depends on the level of growth hormone and IGF-1, tumor size, and the duration of time the patient has had the disease. There are a number of other uh, features of acromegaly, diabetes mellitus and glucose intolerance, hypertension, uh, hypertensive heart disease, cardiomyopathy, uh, arthritis, sleep apnea, and other respiratory disorders. Many patients also have symptoms that are a direct result of the tumor itself. So patients can present with headaches uh, and oftentimes we'll see the tumor growing upwards affecting the visual pathways so patients will have visual field disturbances. When we come back, how Jill finally got diagnosed after 12 years. Stay with us. Welcome back. As patients suffering from rare disorders know, diagnosis is half the battle. That's right. So let's go back to Jill for the rest of her story. I was having all these different little symptoms, and I was going to the physicians, and they were treating me, but they were treating like one symptom at a time instead of looking at the big, broad picture. Because my file was literally an inch thick. But unfortunately, I've learned that a doctor can't diagnose something that they don't know about. And because this is so rare, so many physicians don't know or understand acromegaly. It took seeing at least 10 physicians. When I finally did find a doctor that knew about acromegaly, one of the first things that they asked me was, have you noticed a change in your appearance? This is the first time anyone had ever asked me that. I just started to cry. And I told them, you know, it just seems like I'm getting uglier and uglier every day. Acromegaly is a well-defined clinical syndrome. However, the symptoms and signs often escape detection because of the nature of the illness. In fact, most patients are diagnosed incidentally. And oftentimes it's someone who hasn't seen the patient before 
or hasn't seen them in a while who notices changes in physical features. Once a diagnosis of acromegaly is suspected, we check the IGF-1 level and often the growth hormone level as well. If those levels are elevated, that pretty much confirms the suspicion and then we proceed with an MRI study of the pituitary gland to confirm the diagnosis. So after I was diagnosed, I went and I had an MRI and I found out that I had a macro adenoma. From there, I went to a specialty center in Texas um, for my pituitary surgery. So right after surgery, I actually noticed very quickly that I was improving. I noticed that the soft tissue swelling was better, but it was within the first 28 days that my symptoms started to return. And I knew that there was something wrong again. No single treatment is right for everyone. And ultimately, the goal is to control tumor size, return growth hormone and IGF-1 levels back to normal, improve symptoms and manage comorbidities. Currently in the United States, surgery is the first line treatment option for most patients with a pituitary adenoma uh, causing acromegaly. Radiation therapy, uh, and that comes in several different forms, is also another option. Even though the surgeon might believe the patient has been uh, rendered disease-free, it's the blood test done at six and 12 weeks and the post-operative MRI. There are a number of different medications uh, within several classes of drugs that can be used to treat acromegaly in those patients who have residual or recurrent disease. One of the most important things is that patients work with their physicians to develop a tailored approach to treatment that fits their needs best. So surgery was very important in my treatment, but also, uh, you know, medical management of this post-surgery has made all the difference for me regarding my quality of life. So with proper medical management, instead of the disease being in control of you, you can be in control of the disease. Early diagnosis and treatment is critical because patients suffer with the illness of acromegaly and the attendant manifestations of the disease process. And I think it behooves physicians and healthcare providers in basically all specialties to be on the lookout for such a rare condition. Acromegaly community is probably one of the things that I've done in my life that makes me the most proud. We provide a protective space for patients to talk about their issues. We have over 2,700 members worldwide. Our community is like a great big family and we really do try to provide positive support for all of our members. I've seen how patients suffer throughout the years and it is so difficult. If anything can, can happen with me being an advocate, I'd like to be able to take away the shame of having this condition. And it's given me a gratefulness for every single day in my life. For more information on acromegaly, visit acromunity.com. And of course, you can always visit our website, thebouncingact.com. We'll be right back.